Yes, another episode of Cork and the North podcast here. Myself, Andrew. Uh, thanks to everyone that's been liking, sharing, and subscribing. And also to everybody that came to the live show. We really do appreciate everybody that came to the live show. It was a lot of fun. It was a bit mental um, <laughs> on the day. It was crazy, wasn't it? Oh, mad. But thanks to everybody that came out anyway. We really do appreciate it. Please like, share, subscribe. Subscribe to the YouTube uh, and stuff. And keep supporting the pod. We're trying to keep the lights on here. We're trying to keep the fucking lights on. Right, we've got lights at the moment, but sometimes they go off because we, we need money. See, we need money. The <laughs> lights are off now. Oh, the, we need send me money, send me money, or, or the Lord Jesus will come after you. Anyway, I've taken something. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it. <laughs> so here we are, ladies and gentlemen. This is a very special episode. It's the first one, uh, as some of you will already know. We thought we'd do this differently because I, I am doing the breakfast Q Radio Six to Ten. I don't know if I've mentioned it to be honest with you. And we have the full lineup of the breakfast show here with Decky and Amy and myself. And we thought we would do a sort of like an unfiltered breakfast show. Because obviously when we're on the radio, we're kind of like, I'm learning obviously that we're, we're bound by Ofcom. We're bound by rules of the station. Things you can say, things you can't say. And I've made a few errors of judgment, shall we say. And Decky and Amy have been the ones to kind of like help me and rein me in. And now I've brought them into kind of... What I do, which is the podcast, which is like, fuck this, fuck that, we can say whatever we want. It's so funny, because I used to go on, Andrew, you can't say I that. Mean, Andrew, <laughs> don't do that. Andrew, don't stop. Andrew, just put his mic down. So, you know what I mean? uh, Declan Wilson and Amy. Amy's been on before, obviously. And uh, So, Declan, first of all, uh, first time on the Cork and Our podcast, how do you feel about being on this? Because normally you're, you were doing the breakfast show for years before me and Amy joined. So, first things first, how do you feel about the new breakfast show? How do you feel about me joining? How do you feel about Amy joining? big change to you in your professional career tell us what's the good points what's the bad points tell us all about it do you know what it was mad at first because I was doing the show like you said on my own for so long and then Yaz was producing the show and then the two of us would chip in every so often and again but I, w- I was actually on the ski trip because you were in yeah. back at the base weren't you yes I just remember I started doing the traffic and travel but you guys weren't actually there physically so yeah we, we were doing the show live from Bulgaria yeah. And then it was like, right, when you come back, there's going to be two people in the studio and then there's going to be three of you. So when I come back, it was like, what's going on? Like, you know what? It's yeah. so different. But uh, just got used to it like that. It was brilliant. Yeah, I think we hit it off right away. Like. Yeah, I think it seems to have like, uh, there was no sort of like, oh, we need to figure out each other's personalities. Yeah, I think it just, it just happened, just happened very quickly. Yeah. 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 I think the way it works, we all have different personalities. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. We, we do have very different personalities. I mean, I, I have we are very different very different and I think that's why people seem to enjoy it because we come from different angles yeah Amy when you started obviously you started with the two yeah you, you came in with Decky and we uh, did a few weeks didn't we yeah we did a few weeks on your own and then was it kind of like oh is Andrew coming is he not coming because uh, obviously there was a quite a lot it went on for a while yeah because you'd done that first week and then there was a yeah so a, basically I basically tell the listeners uh, podcast people I did the four days and after the four days Q offered me the job basically yeah. and they said would you be interested in coming in I, on a full-time basis and i was like oh jesus like it's funny nice. amy and i said the same thing <laughs> like, oh, jesus, he's coming back. <laughs> i was like oh no i don't know like like i i, I was i was i was definitely up for it but yeah. it was like such a big change in my life i didn't know if i would be able to deal with the change actually you, you, you had to I mean? change a lot of things didn't you that's why it took so long mm. yeah because once we sat down and actually went through everything the contracts and everything like that and what the role was and what I had to do and I I've never worked for, I've never had a line manager for 14 years yeah and then it's like a big lifestyle change as I well, had a meeting with like somebody in day. HR and they're like we want to talk to you about abusing staff I'm like what the fuck <laughs> yes <is? laughs> what I, you can't do this I'm like whoa 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 I'm self-employed you've, I do whatever I want you've probably never had someone say you can't say that Andrew in 14 yeah, years exactly, as well yeah. <laughs> so obviously once you know I'm not I wouldn't consider myself a, an edgy or a how would you say type of comic that would be a rude or offensive anyway I tell yeah. jokes and take the piss and stuff but so it was actually it wasn't that bad for me yeah mm-hmm. in terms of like the coming in of the the, the, the gear change but it's the lifestyle change because you've been doing it how long now Decky? I did the breakfast show March 2021 so what's that coming so you're, you're, you two and a half the, years you came in the pandemic yep just the tail end of the sort of pandemic I sort of went on the show because it was weird like during the pandemic I was on afternoons which was one to four but that was like people's breakfast during the pandemic. You know oh what yeah, because I mean? so people had a weird people thing People changed their habits of listening during the pandemic because yeah, people yeah, were yeah. waking up maybe during the day or whatever and then tuning in. Yeah, or so, they had it on the house and yeah. they were at home. Or, yeah, I suppose so. It was, it was really weird. The magic, but is I never heard of Q Radio in the pandemic. I never even heard it. Exi- didn't even know it existed because I was living in England. 
Oh yeah, starting the pandemic. You see, hi Darren. No, but I wouldn't have known of Q Radio because I was I was living oh, in England. Oh, so like, you, so when did you move here? Oh, 2020, but uh, end of 2020, kind of like. So I was, I. I, I'll be honest with you, like, I didn't even listen to Cool FM. I, I, I'm a BBC Five Live guy. I'm an RT yeah. Radio 1, 2 FM, and BBC Five Live for sport. And you hadn't even heard it yet? So I wouldn't have, local radio wouldn't have been, not saying local radio, but I mean, cool, uh, XFM is uh, XFM. Like commercial radio? Like yeah, so commercial radio, radio, like, stuff like that is all national, like, and then Q Radio is national, but it's national in Northern Ireland, uh, which is about 1.9 million people, but then you obviously you can get it on the apps and the DABs and the phones and all that anywhere in the world. Yeah. Apparently, we, they're told us we have a big listenership. Where in uh, is it? Is it Paraguay or something? Dubai. Like Dubai or something like that. Every hotel in Dubai we're playing basically. Like Are we in every hotel? Every hotel. Yeah. Why? All the millionaires love us. Why can't we get a free free fucking trip to Dubai? I know. When are we getting in? <laughs> when are we getting in there? When, when are we getting free shit? Burj Khalifa. We should I want fucking free shit. I want fucking. Yeah, Burj Khalifa. I want better shit. Give me money. <laughs> anyway. Ah, Amy, I know. <laughs> See, this is what we're working with. This is what we're working with here. All right. Anyway, listen. I joined anyway, and uh, I've been loving it. How have you been finding it? The whole hey, Amy. How have you been finding your new I've life? I've loved it. I have absolutely loved it. Well, you know, it's like a wee dream come true for me. So I'm buzzing. But I'm just so happy that we've all. I feel like we've all slotted in really well. You know, to our new. It's weird because nothing's roles. forced. Like genuinely, yeah, what yeah. you get with us in the morning is crack. what you get. Like. It's so funny because you've got this reputation of being a moan and being a complainer and you're not really like I'm that. Not you're, really actually, like you're actually, actually probably actually the most buzzing off. in the mornings. I was saying that to you before. Like, not that we're not not that we're not excited in the mornings, but Andrew really comes in and he's like, right guys, come on. And then the mic goes up like, and he goes, oh Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh Christ, I have to bloody work. It's actually even funny now because I sort of feel like we're on the air and every time you swear, I sort of tense up a wee bit as if you've done something wrong. Yeah. But we don't swear on the way. No, we've none of us have sworn. No. no, you've never it's made so it. It's so weird because I, I feel, any time there's a microphone in front of me, I'm like, don't swear. Yeah, it's just natural. Yeah, but I'm... I'm Is that like radio mode? I'm probably, I've been doubling down on my comedy a bit. What do you mean? Been, so like, when I've been doing some comedy shows, I've been overly uh, ruder. Oh, because you can? Because I can't. Because yeah. I'm just saying like, if you're, if you, like, I'm like, I'm not fucking losing the oh, comedy I'm not, gonna be, I'm not gonna be like doing comedy in a year's time hello it's great to be here yeah. good afternoon <laughs> I'm gonna tell you a joke just coming up after the break <laughs> you know I thought you were gonna say the opposite like you were on stage and instead of like saying like bad words or something you would have went on and oh fiddlesticks oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh jeepers beepers yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, what people think is uh, if you do I mean one thing I, li- I like the role so one thing we've been doing over the last couple of weeks on the radio is that we've been trying out each other's person's role because um, Decky's going on holiday in August, so me and Amy are going to have to run the show, which I'm fucking terrified about already. I know. You'd be grand. There's a lot of work that you do. But anyway, uh, I like the roles that we have. You know, like you, you're you like the captain of the ship. You steer the ship. Yeah. Declan does all does the difficult De- stuff. Declan does all the heavy lifting. Want to pay rise, bosses, if you're watching this? <laughs> yeah. No, but he literally does. And he coordinates us, and we just go, rah, shout at each other sometimes. And no. Declan's like, right, everybody, this is what's going to happen. And here's the weird thing, because you just don't see how easy you make it for me, because like you could come in with a dry line at the end or something, and then that could be like, boom, that's it. Like, song. Yeah. But you have to listen out for that. Yeah, I know, but it's, it's you guys make it easy, because you just do it. Yeah, but I, I find, you, when I did your role, I, I hosted the, I drove the desk for an hour. <laughs> I found it very Hello, hard. this is the radio. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, this is the radio. They, they know it's the radio. They're fucking listening to it. I love oh, that. Jesus. You don't, you don't tell Welcome. people what you're doing. You show them. Welcome to another episode of the radio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Much. We're on season one, episode three. <laughs> now, um, when I did your role, Decky, for the hour, I found it very hard to actually think about trying to be a bit funny. Yeah. Because I was spinning so many plates. Yeah. And obviously one person's on the left and one person's on the right. So mm. I was I was like, yeah. I felt I felt like more of a conductor rather than a than a somebody that was contributing. Okay. But I think over time once I learned the desk and get more comfortable with the desk just just so when I'm when I'm standing on my side, I'm just sitting standing here going, Yeah, yeah, and blah 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 and blah blah blah. I'm not dictating. Yeah. yeah. It's I'm weird because it's I'm like a second talking. nature because I've been doing it for so long. You're just sort of doing that while you're chatting and having, you know, like looking all around you and looking for reaction. And Yeah. yeah. You know. Well, I'm the same. Like even when I stood for an hour because all I could think about was what button am I pressing next? And then all my mind was consumed in that. So then to have to like be part of the conversation too, I was like mind blown. 
but like hopefully we'll get we will get there we will get there it's so oh, funny yeah. we'll I, don't, I don't want to be too technical because I don't want to bore people who don't really you know care about the technical game and things but you're having to time up for everything yeah but you don't realise how much goes into it you have to think about every single timing of every single bit that you're saying so we can't just have a free flowing conversation for as long as we want like there needs to be stuff to it that's it yeah everything like even the news especially uh, bank holidays and stuff we don't do the news internally it comes from an outside broadcast so uh. you have to be like on point on the second yeah. so you're spinning so many plays but anyway it's great crack and I must admit like the comments that people have message in on the radio have been pretty cool like some of them like oh Andrew needs to cheer up and I don't mind kind of that like, <laughs> but but that's but like comedy comes from f- fucking victims like comedy yeah, comes from true. negativity yeah but the, the messages are really nice like I was really shocked just how nice messages from people are or just that people are listening and interact with you and stuff yeah and uh, Decky, when you when you've been doing it now for you know you've been in that breakfast show now for what, coming up to two over two years, mm. when you went into that role, were you did you go into that role knowing that there was going to be a team around you, or were you just told, look, Deck, it's just going to be you now forever, or was it like a plan that a team was going to come in? How how did it work? Well, it's funny. I always knew I wanted to do breakfast radio in particular, like yeah. you know, because it was the time of the day I wanted to. You know, people are waking up. You're you're getting them set up for the day. I always knew like that's the one that's the show I want it's the flagship show isn't it really it's, uh, but not even for that it's just because I have a real passion for breakfast radio it's creative it's fun it's, it could be happy yeah. it could be sad it could be whatever Like, and you're setting people up for the day basically but um, I always knew that I wanted to build a team you know like invite people into the show and have like a sort of I call it like breakfast 2.0 like with me it was grand and all and I found my feet doing that show for two years but when you have like a team like you guys have added to it now even more and it's sort of building you know it's, yeah. it's at the next level now you know I kind of feel like we've got um, I, w- I didn't think I would enjoy it as much did you not? no I didn't think I would enjoy it as much because coming from a stand up comedy background right I've been in control of my diary I go wherever I can say yes to stuff and say yeah. I'm very lucky and I'm so f- aware of how grateful I am yeah. to be a stand up comedian to do something I actually love um, it's wonderful and then to get other opportunities on top of that. Now, listen, I, I'm not the best broadcaster in the world. I'm not the best podcaster in the world. I don't have the best podcast in the world. I'm, but one thing I I kind of have learned over the last few years is that there's room for everybody. Yeah. And there's enough success to go around. Okay. And then to get a, an opportunity to go onto the radio, I just went in going. My mentality when I went in with Q and you, I don't think I've ever told you this, but I'll tell you this was I was in for four days and I went. I don't need a job. So yeah. Why would I care? Whereas a couple of years ago, I might have gone in and be like, I really would like this. And I put myself down under too much pressure. When I'm thinking, I'm just being myself. Yeah, and just seeing mm. if you actually liked it. And, and, I, and, I, and I think once it. I've been myself more, things have gone better. Had you always an itch to do radio? Like? Yeah, always, yeah. Always. You yeah, just yeah, yeah. I remember meeting Pete Snodden for a coffee down in, Bang, down in uh, Hollywood. And I said to him, like, because I, I know Pete. And, like, Pete's obviously uh, the, the, the breakfast DJ with Cool FM. Pete's a lovely fella. We played a bit of golf together and stuff. I said to him, Pete, like, I'd love to get into it now. Because I've done a lot of radio in the South, you know, like just interviews though. Yeah. yeah. And guests, but I used to do a bit of a regular slot on BBC Radio Manchester. And I did a bit of a regular spot on Talk Sport and stuff. And so it's always intrigued me and I've always liked it. But I always kind of worried about my speech. Um, like when I was 16, one of my te- I did an assessment. My teacher said I had a reading age of a 12 year old. No way. And my mom obviously sorted that out. Like we went and I got extra, I got it sorted. But. I've always been worried about my speech and I've always noticed that many years I used to be, I've, a li- had a, I've had a little bit of a stutter and um, just from, st- you know, just from c- probably probably a bit of like of a confidence thing or something like that. But then I talk for a living. Yeah, by yep. being com- that's literally by doing what com- you do. But, yeah. but, but the comedy speaking and the radio speaking is very different. Oh. Do you see what I mean? You, with the comedy, I've noticed that it's like you can kind of like be a little bit you know you can be a bit rougher around the edges you can yeah be, you don't have to be a slick whereas some of the radio people like like Kulsh- uh, uh, um, uh, Kushla who does the late night show she's so smooth yeah you know, she it's is like, it's uh, 10 5 tonight on Q and I, whereas I feel about it it's uh, 10 5 do you know what I mean Here's I worry about that like. everyone has different styles but the kind of radio we're doing in the morning like I remember when I first started in radio I would have went like uh, Brian dried outside then I would have went oh it's meant to be drowned bright you know oh, what I mean? And then I would have thrown my headphones at the wall and be like, I need a new career. Yeah. No, I would have went mad. But then, see, now you can I say go, fuck there, by the way, just so you know, you can say fuck. You, you, it's, <laughs> just, it's just the mode. It's the, mic- fuck. <laughs> it's the microphone mode. I'm just, I'm just so yeah. used to not swearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just swear at home. Yeah. Oh, what's yeah, yeah, oh, he swear. swears when we're having swear. a conversation. Sure, he swears when we're having a conversation. Yeah, the mics go down and I'm like, Oh yeah, like when the mics aren't on. you can't do it. It's like no. <laughs> when the mics aren't on, Decky's like, I swear to God, I'm gonna fucking kill that fucking prick. Oh, and it's now over to Amy for the job. 
That's <laughs> basically it, yeah. yeah. No, it's not. I was joking. No, it is. But um, no, it was funny because I would have threw my headphones and be like, I fucked that up. No, I need to do it again. There you go, set it. Uh, but then, see now, I'm not as... You're a bit too hard on ourselves. Yeah, aren't you, like? you, know you are hard on yourself though, but you literally have stuff down to your tea and Connor what? Brennan would be the same. I was shadowing Declan and Connor before I came on and I was going, oh my God, like how am I going to do this? Like they literally... Connor would have been annoyed about like a millisecond of like that wasn't like ultra slick that nobody would notice. Here's the thing, like what? nobody would notice it. And you just hit yeah. the nail on the head. They're spot on. Anyone listening doesn't care. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like if you're talking to, if I'm talking to you now and I say something wrong, I go, oh wait, I mean this. You correct yourself and yeah. move on. You know. Like, what I mean? do you remember when I was late that day? What I, we did and I was late <laughs> that day. Yeah. So that was I was fun. late for the show, and my biggest anxiety is being late. Yeah. Isn't that like because it's breakfast, like you know? But you are so on time, and if you're two seconds late, normally you're like, "Oh my god, guys, I'm so sorry." And we're like, the "You're fine." Best phone call I've ever. You had rang me at ten to six, gun. You're right. What did what did I answer? Oh fuck! <laughs> that was, <laughs> that so was my answer. That was so funny. Oh fuck! I should have recorded it. I should have sat and recorded oh, both Jesus. like Declan and then your reaction, and then Declan was going, "Oh, don't worry, don't rush." You could just hear you fumbling. <laughs> and, you were going, I'll oh, give him an extra five minutes. It was like, I wasn't he's had no, half an hour. But I, but I wasn't going to ring you because I thought, oh my God, like he's probably in the car. And then I was like, oh no, he normally texts. And then... I'm a, I'm a fucker for starting things on time. Sean will tell you, won't you, Sean? Uh-huh. Producer Sean knows me and I'm like, we're doing it at this time and we're finishing at this time. Oh, Andrew that loves really the finish suits time. me, like... Huh? That really suits me, like... Does it? Yeah. I, I say to Sean, we're doing, say, a podcast 11 to 12, right? I'll be in 10.45, I'll be in 10.50 basically just to say like this is when I remember like remember that day we were on the radio and I said uh, about coming around to my house I was just about to I was going to say that Andrew time. invited us this to the this sums me up as a person and Sean will back me up on uh-huh. this right go on no, tell him you can come to my house we'll do a barbecue it'll be great and all like we'll have the, you know sausages and burgers and stuff uh, now you can arrive by 6 and you'll be gone by 10 yeah. <laughs> I was like <laughs> Like, like, oh right, okay, no sweat. Yeah. Anything, time? anything I've ever heard you plan. It's, like, it's only gonna take. You're like, it's only gonna take half an hour, and then we're out, and then so you'll be out by this time, and then you can be home by this time. But I love that. Imagine a bouncer coming. I still, I still room, wish right? everybody That's was like that. Time now, please. It's, yeah. it's, it's like, like ever see when you bring uh, kids to like a ballpark. Yeah. <laughs> no, and and like they've got like a wee time slot from like seven to nine. Yeah. It's like okay, so could everybody with the red stickers yeah. please leave? That's it, yeah. It's like Andrew. That'll and be him to give a wristband. But you know what it is? It's because I travel so much, and my life is all around timing yeah. yeah and being on stage so like if i go to a gig and i'm on stage at eight o'clock like i have to i i all I have to be there for seven but it's like your social your social things are timed it's yeah. so funny and then i'm off stage say at nine o'clock and like the train is at 20 past nine i have to be in and out and on time so would you watch your clock when you're on stage like uh, would you yeah stand up yeah so like i'll have a timer or something like that like you know um so everything is regimented and then when i realize I like to know exactly where I like after this podcast now I have to be somewhere half an hour after this podcast I have to be somewhere that's quite tight I'm going to drag right? this out big time no you won't I'm just <laughs> <laughs> they'll be like no, no so, he's let us know our time slot so I live I, I, and I also kind of think like I think there's probably a little element of me of saying like oh do you want to come over to, 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 pop over for an hour for a cup of tea and they'll pop over and then at the hour I'm like right we've, we've done the hour yeah, <laughs> I love I'm that. very like that. Like, I'm I very like. Okay, we've done. We've like done, that. No, we've I done, quite like that. We've done. We've done the hour, mate. Yeah, and, fair enough, but like, like and, and and it's not that I dislike people. It's just that <laughs> already I'm like I've something else to do. Yeah. Do you, know? do you know what? But there's definitely a skill in trying to get people out of your house when they've overstayed their welcome. Oh my! Oh, my I'm really bad at that. Mom, Somebody could sit there all day. My mother was the best. Now I, I'm talking in the nineties. Now you know when people used to call to your house without texting or calling. Yeah. Oh, I just thought I'd pop in and see you. See you. My mum's name was Patricia, so I was like, oh, pop in Patricia for a cup of tea. You see me when I'm looking at me going. Yeah. You know, she'd the Irish mother's eyes. They'd be like this. Look. Yeah. And I, and I should go off to the shop there and get a packet of Macado biscuits or something like that, right? And you come back. And they'd sit and they'd chat, and then my mother would get up. Right now, it was great to see you, but I didn't want to say it earlier because I wanted to talk to you. But I have to go over to see Brida. I told her I'd be over tonight, and we're bringing over the apple tart because <laughs> your husband isn't hasn't been well. Not I remember once my mum got her coat on, walked out, <laughs> put an apple tart in the car, and drove around the town on one lap because the other woman wouldn't just leave to prove it. just to prove and then my mother came back in that fucking bitch <laughs> if she calls up here again that's so good that's brilliant rather that's than so saying good. oh we're not a, you know, but, that, but would do people call anymore and mm. imagine if I called up to your house now and knocked down alright what are you doing here 
just thought I'd call in. Yeah. You'd be like, uh, this, this isn't arranged. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, no. yeah, you'd you know freak I mean? like you would. Yeah, you that would be weird. weird. Be fucking how weird do you them. get away? I, th- I hate small talk. I'm really bad. You see, like, if you're in a supermarket, I hate talking to people because then you're like, when do you b- leave? You know, how do you get out? I hate that. No, you need, you need, a, you need an out. Yeah. I've tried this one before, but the worst one is, like, no one you give them the rhetorical, what's happening? Oh, yeah. Uh, and you, you don't, don't you don't want an answer. Just, but just they give you an answer. Here. And you're, like, you're already walking past them and you say, what's happening? And they say, I oh, hear all good. Just like I was doing a job <laughs> down. And you're like, Jesus oh. Christ. <laughs> I didn't want an answer. Yeah. But I hate that sometimes when people ask and you're like, do you want me to stop? So you're like, oh, stop doing all. I hate that. Oh, it's so, crazy, oh, isn't it? Small, I don't mind it. Like, uh, I, I've had people say to me, oh, Andrew, how are you getting on? I goes, yeah, not so bad. How are you getting on? Oh, yeah, really good. Good. Anyway, listen, I'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you just go, listen, I'll talk to you soon. And, uh, but then I don't want people to think one. I'm rude either. No, but I like, don't want to talk to no, them. No, but I'm at the point in my life now, and I don't know, and I think, Sean has just got married, right? Mm-hmm. Terrible decision <laughs> right an absolutely Sean. terrible decision Rats, Sean. I mean, do you know what he, he, he's younger than you Amy and he's no, married no he's not how he's old are you Sean I'm older he's older than me oh you're older I'm than me I'm 26 I'm 25 26. he's 26, 26. Right. so Sean gets married terrible decision beautiful woman Nicole beautiful woman the poor woman has ruined her fucking life being with him I know what he I know what he comes from I've seen it. I've seen the court documents. Poor Sean. <laughs> we, live street, we, live, we, we, we do live in the same street. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm only yeah. winding. Sean's a good mate of mine. And uh, I must say, I gave Sean a little present for his birthday, for his wedding, didn't I? He did indeed. Um, no, not yes. Very good, very good. Uh, but <laughs> but <laughs> I always take the piss out of him for getting married. I'm just jealous. I, um, and I, I caught you out against um, Naomi Long. <laughs> what was that? For bullying me. <laughs> you, what was that? I was like, you were slaying me the other day. And uh, what was it? The, 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 Oh, you what you were wearing to the Naomi Long interview? What did he wear? You were wearing like a nice little jumper oh, well, with a shirt. Well, you said he looked like a reserve school teacher. Yeah. Because <laughs> he was so well dressed. You said it to me. You looked I like said a, it to him. He told me, he goes, don't I look like a, a, a substitute, sec- a substitute teacher, school teacher? Yeah. So he told me. So I just told Naomi, hey, Naomi, doesn't he look like a... And I goes, that's awful, Naomi, isn't it? I know. Like, like, <laughs> <laughs> so so he, he basically, he, he took the piss out of himself. And then I went, oh, yeah. Naomi, he st- it doesn't need. I'm confirming the joke, and then he tells the Naomi that I'm picking on him. I know. But he, he basically fucking set me him. up. That's genius. <laughs> Absolutely. Quality genius. though, isn't it? Oh, it's great, man. It's great. But yeah, so Sean gets so so Sean Sean get married now. So as you get older, as you will get older, because I'm the oldest one here, just only, only by a couple of years. <laughs> wow. <laughs> We take our we take our time. I just thought there was a thing on the phone. There. Anyway, <laughs> somebody's phone was beeping. Anyway, as you get older, you'll realise there comes a point in your life where you'll fuck people off. Do you know what I mean? Oh yeah. You'll yeah. fuck people off. Hundred percent. So everyone knows your friend. Do you know what I mean? Almost mm. see this, but but as you get older, you realise which people are the right people to be your friend. Do you see what I'm saying? But what do you do? You just cut 100%. them out. Yeah. You got to learn how to do boundaries. Yeah. Have you put, have you ever? Uh, all right, all three of you here, so. Sean, have you ever put a boundary in place with somebody? Which basically yeah. means, I know this person, I can't be in their life anymore, so I'm going to come out. Yeah. How, what have you done? Um, so, there's certain people, right? Like, and in my head, if they tax me, I think to myself, I'm not taxing them back unless it's like office hours. And it's oh. not like a business thing. It could be I that. But it's like, I want to sort of let them and know that like, you know... I'm not more of like a friend than yeah. than they think it is, sort of thing, you know. So, so like it's you like leave them hanging a bit. So I'll go like I'm not taxing them back at nine o'clock at night. I'll wait until ten the next day and say yeah. and reply to their meme saying ha ha ha. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it was a meme. <laughs> yeah. He only messages me. He stops messaging me after five o'clock every day. You know. Like. <laughs> so I guess when the mics go down at ten, Andrew doesn't want to hear from us. <laughs> after after ten o'clock, get the fuck out of my life. <laughs> boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. <laughs> so you have a boundary with your phone and work and people, uh-huh. right? What about you, Amy? That's. I think that's fair enough. No, I probably don't have any boundaries at all. Really? Uh, well, like I can't really think of an example. You give. Have me you had friendship? Have you had friendships where you've had to go? I can't be friends with that person anymore. I've never really had big fallouts. I've never been a big drama fallout type of person. I thought God. you were going to say I've never really had any friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nobody to cut out, so I just didn't have any. But yeah. like, no, not really. I've never been one. You know the way there's girls and there's always drama and there's big fallouts. Oh, Thank yeah. God I haven't been one of them because I couldn't deal with it. No. 
Maybe not. Is that really bad? Does that mean I've just had... But to be honest, probably something's bad. But like my close friends are really... Well, I have friends I've picked up along the way as well. Yeah. But my big group of friends, a lot of them are still from school. Like, So I'm still good friends with my school friends. Does that mean I have no boundaries? Yeah, but you were only in school a few years ago. <laughs> no, literally. No, literally I was. Well, like, do you know what I mean? My yeah, school so friends... Like, hasn't been I have long. school friends of mine now that are retiring in their 40s because they've made so much money. Well, I don't have school friends. And like, I would say 40s. Like, I mean, I'm early and like, I'm not in that. Like, I'm just saying. Okay, they were in the okay. same school around the same time, but they were years ahead of me. Decky, what about you? What? How many... Uh, I, do you know what? I'm open like a book. I always tell my listeners I'm open like a book too. Like I, I, I wouldn't mind if I seen someone in the street who'll come up to me and they're like, oh, what about you? Blah, blah, blah. Talk away. But what about like friendships in the past where fellas or mates or older work colleagues where you go, I need to just, they can't be in my life because they're not right for me. Oh, yeah. Oh, I've cut people how, out, yeah. How have you implemented that? Just by saying, look, this is how it is. Or would you say that? Would you yeah. say it? Would you yeah. say it? Yeah. Better oh, you'd actually there. just say? Yeah. yeah. Oh God! If oh, I was yeah. gonna, if I was gonna cut someone out, it would just be like a real gradual, like almost oh, ghosting no, I, of a friendship. I just go listen. Here's how it is. Blah blah blah. But, would you? Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't. But I, I would. confrontation. What would you do? Would do you, you know say? What? I never liked confrontation, but I'm getting a wee bit better with it now. When I'm confrontation is not. You need that. Though. It's not confrontation. I think it's just standing up for yourself and being assertive. But that just fills me. With but at the end of the day, like if you're on, a, if you want to do something in your life and you want to go somewhere, so like. You know, take Sean gets married, like which is brilliant. You know, lovely wife and all that. Great day, going on his honeymoon and all that uh, honeymoon and stuff like that. Where's like going to America. Going? Huh? Where's this going? So what I'm I saying is that like he knows exactly what he wants in his life. Yeah. That's my point. He knows. Remember we spoke about it before that he said he's felt very settled with Nicole yeah. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So he's gone. I'm going to do what I want to do in my life. And if people around me don't agree with it, or are saying like Sean, do you know you're a bit young to be getting married and stuff like that. That you can't listen to those kind of voices. Yeah, you have to, Sean yeah. has to do what's right for Sean. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, I'll take the mick because, like, because I'm 41 and I'm not fucking married, and I'm just probably a little bit jealous. But this guy's too happy. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But my point is that he's got to do what's right for Sean. Oh yeah, you know like if mean? somebody was questioning, like, obviously I'm really passionate now about the radio, and that's what I want to do, and that's the path. If somebody was turning around and saying, "Don't think you should be doing that," like, I'm not going to listen. It's not like I'm a pushover. I just have you had someone say, "Do you get a real job?" Or like, what no, are you no, that's no, I haven't. To be have fair, you had any abuse yet? No. I know I'm waiting. Well, you have you've had a few sugar daddy offers though. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Brilliant. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Was it five grand a week? Five. Five, five grand. I think. I was a week. It was weekly. Yeah, yeah. And then and then after we talked about it on the show that day, I got another message from the same person. What did he say? Was he the listening to the show? Message. Do you remember the one that said it said like nudes or foot pics? Don't worry if not or something. You should have sent them. Don't a don't worry if not. Foot. Elbow will do just as well. And then <laughs> and so that was like that. Remember I'd gone way back into the messages. That was like November. And then that day we talked about it on the show, I got the same message again. I thought, were they listening? So he's listening to the show. I don't know, it could have been a coincidence. I get my cabs out for a fiver, like. Could be a girl. You can't assume it's a man. You no. can't assume it's a man. It could have been a girl. Fiver. But like five grand, I'd consider that. Would and you, to would be you, honest, would I know. Would you, would you. A foot photo? For five for grand. For five grand, like it's pretty tempting, isn't that a wee foot? <laughs> um, and isn't and it you've like... talked about it on the radio now, so like the price of bricks going up. I true. You know what I mean? I true. Right f- five grand a toe. Yeah. How many toes you got? Only got three. You should born, do it. Born inst- and an Insta page at <laughs> Amy's Cabs. I know. You should do Amy. You should do uh, uh, what, what's it called? OnlyFans. OnlyFans. No. God. You, 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 why don't you two do OnlyFans? Like, what were we doing OnlyFans? Yeah. I feel like pickled onion monster munch. No one yeah. wants to see that. Yeah, you, you don't have to do fate deck. You could do, you know do Mel's. OnlyFans to American women who are obsessed with Irish musicians. I would love that Declan you would be, you could is be, there a market for that like? yes I'm yeah. sure there is you could, you could, I just want to marry an Irish guy oh yeah I'm Decky ten dollars and I'll show you a bit of nipple you could be playing the accordion naked yeah <laughs> I go on then I'd be your agent I, yeah but just know us. that no, uh, you're, only you're fans are trying to change like their whole image now I heard that so um, uh, they're like sponsoring you know people now that are doing non here Pornographic things. Only fans. Good yeah. So they'd like to have thrown McKenna. Thrown McKenna, the boxer from the Whiskey and White podcast. He's, he's sponsored by Only Fans. He's sponsored by Only Fans. So is he? Should get the pod sponsor. So by he OnlyFans? um he has like an Only Fans page and people can subscribe to it and it's just like him posting up like his uh like training routine and his dad plans and stuff like that. You know. So I heard that they're trying to clean people it up. People are paying to watch a man work out in the gym. Yeah. Hold on a second. Years ago, this went from, oh look, I'm on Instagram, which is free. And I'm watching somebody in the gym lift a weight, which is free. 
And I'm thinking this is just now mental. It, now people are paying to watch somebody lift a weight. In fairness, in people could be still using that as like a <laughs> like a monographic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> different kind oh. of dumbbell. Right, but Tyrone is a, is a very very attractive. But then nice why don't they just like on his Instagram instead of paying? I know exactly. I don't yeah. Get that. So only fans are sponsored. Think, imagine we got the breakfast show sponsored by. Q Radio, Q Radio breakfast. Are you getting the kids to school? Sign up to OnlyFans. <laughs> and then Philip Scofield's like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Is that? Am I gonna get in trouble for that? Now? <laughs> oh, 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 in the back of my head, I went off. Come off. Come. Yeah, no. Oh, you're I, I, I can't get out of my head. I'm like, oh. Did, how, <laughs> how long was your uh, off come talk? Like, or the talk to first? I had to read a book. Oh Jesus. Well, I, I got that before. I, 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 I read the book in about in eight minute. minutes. Basically, yeah. you don't say this and you don't say that and you don't say it unless you... And if you do, don't... You're better off just not naming anyone. Can uh, I tell you an off story? Go on. I went to an off talk one day and it was like at the station and we were told like before we were in, like, be mature now, be mature. <laughs> of course, I'm not. I'm like, I'm really not. <laughs> See when it comes to things like this. So there was a lady in the room and she was reading out a list of words you can't say and the first one, <laughs> literally the first word just stood up at a lectern and went <clears throat> beef curtain <laughs> <laughs> how do you not laugh come on like. did everybody laugh you have no humour if you don't laugh oh, oh, that's so it's, funny it's, did I, everyone in the room laugh and, well Surely. everyone was trying not to because yeah. we told not to so everyone went that's even worse <laughs> but the, like, the, the, the mad thing about it is that you can say tool on the radio you can say muppet you just can't say those beef are, well those aren't swear words yeah but you can say muppet do you know that well sure muppet's hardly that's a swear word yeah I said tool and somebody rang in going, you can't say tool. And we were like, well, you can. You can. Oh, you can. That's, that's, you know, you're a tool. Yeah. It's a little bad word. I remember, like, uh, when I first, like, had to do all the off-com stuff. And, uh, like, some of the things in there is crazy. You know, like, the you're not allowed to do a live seance. Yeah. That's right. You're yeah. not allowed to do a live. Oh, that's, that's next week, fucked. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I didn't know that, Dick. Why didn't you let me know? I, was going to, I thought we were going to go and dig up a body. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ! I, I remember the guy that was get, like giving me the training, like really focused on the, all this occult stuff, as if like I as was just like you. taking it all off, going shit. That's all <laughs> in my ideas down the window. He's like going, no uh, sacrificial, like um, no sacrifices on there. <laughs> no, no, no mention up. of cult <laughs> followings and stuff. I was going like, what about me? <laughs> <laughs> Like, <laughs> makes you think that I want to do this stuff on the radio. <laughs> but what I also found interesting was, like, this stuff about that. You can't outline the methods of a crime that's being conducted. Oh, really? So, um, if, say, there was a bank robbery. Yeah. Um, in the area or whatever, and you're reporting on the bank robbery, you can say that the bank robbery happened. And what the current situation is with the bank robbery and where it happened, but you can't say how the robbery was achieved. Oh, so you can't be like, oh, they went in the the, desk the back, back window yeah. because uh, they found uh, they knew somebody who knew the security code and blah blah. blah. Like, so you can't like detail. Wait, no way. Maybe What's, in case I get somebody you're an idea. Just because it up for the next person or something. Yeah. yeah. So, oh uh, yeah, like they went in the side door, uh, so next which time, is always open, which is always open. Yeah, <laughs> but I think that's only like a a UK like thing because the other way, like you hear, uh, you see like American TV shows or films and stuff, and it's like the perpetrator done this and blah blah. Yeah, but I but I haven't heard anything on like on like UK radio. Yeah, that's true. But uh, down in, down down in, that's a UK thing. But in in Ireland, it's more like, how did he get in? I don't know. I think he came in the door. Uh, yeah. And then he walked into the door and he said, "Give me the money." And she gave him the fucking money. Like, you know, yeah. like something like that. Like, you know. Um, oh, really? Right, Decky. So how? For, first of all, let's go back a little bit because we're going to obviously talk about the radio. How are you finding it? How are you finding it with us? I'm loving it. Yeah. I really, I'm loving it. Like, yeah. Did you feel a little bit? Uh, Sort of like, oh fuck! Uh, Don't get me wrong. At the I'm start, not because it's your baby that you're like, oh, this isn't all about me anymore. At the start, because you do get comfortable in ways, like you know, you yeah. do get comfortable, and I was sort of like getting comfortable, and then I went, right, okay, there's a massive change, like, and change is good, like you know. Well, you already had to have me coming in, and then it was three people you had to yeah, coordinate. That was a change, but then um, obviously when there was the three of us, it was like, oh, this is a big change, like a big, big change. But I think for now, like now, it's for the better, like. Because yeah. you listen, and you know what, the listeners reflect that as well. See the some of the messages I've got from people. It's it's amazing to hear. Yeah, them. it's it's really good. Yeah, yeah. and we're melting. You asking you questions flat out. Why do you do that? When do you do this? Yeah. How do you do that? That's that's sweet. You know what I mean. Uh, I find that uh, when I was coming on, I said I'd start. I was I I was kind of saying like, what's my role? Like I'm 
I'm not good in there as like a po- I'm not a polished. I'm not a radio DJ. You know, I'm not, well, a, not a DJ or a broadcaster or whatever. Like, Do you know what? I I'm a comedian just going in to contribute to a breakfast show. This yeah. is the you mad know? thing. Anyone can do radio. See when people go, oh, you have to be a professional broadcaster. You don't. Well, like, I've only really yes. started off like, and but I just really want to do it. So I'm really interested in doing it and like learning. And so are you, Andre? Like, you really want to know more. Yeah. And I think that's why it's working because oh, we yeah, care. but I don't want to. I don't want to go in and phone it in. I want to yeah. go in and like. With any job that you do or anything new that you start out in, whether it's if you're trying to dr- learn to drive a car, you're not going to be good on your first lesson, mm. you know. Yeah. Um, or you want to go to the gym, you know. This is going to take months and months and months to get into a system, a rhythm, an identity, a personality. Yeah. Um, comfortable within yourself. Um, you know the sh- the ethos of the show, the the kind of the style of the show. We're f- we're you know in our second month now, and um, I think we've got a good angle. Yeah. We're getting there, aren't we? Yeah. I think we've got a nice, we've got a few Wellness Wednesdays at the start of the month. We've got Cork Watch, and um, what else have we got? We've got a uh, uh, Throwback Thursdays. Throwback Thursdays. Do you yeah. know what I mean? That yeah. kind of stuff. Like, so we're kind of, and if any of our listeners want to give us some ideas as well, yeah, we're always what, watching. We should course. do, and we've got a, you know, but were you? Did you sit down at home and talk to your wife and be like, oh? Uh, what if these people come in now and they take over? Yeah, be honest. Because no, we, we well, said, I said, like, I'm not going in there trying to take over or yeah. anything. Like, for me, an equal, per, I'll, I'll look, I'll be honest with you. For know? me, it's not about the limelight and it's not about yeah. fame and it's not about, you know, I'm doing, I, I'm in this game and radio because I love it. Like, and I love connecting with, you know, people uh, through yeah. that medium. Like, yeah. it, like, don't get me wrong. If I was offered TV work, I'd take it because the money's great. Oh, yeah. But, um, it's not always that good though. No, I know. I've done a few bits and you're like, but, mm. It would be interesting. Like, have you done any I TV? I would take it, but radio is my first love. Like yeah. I, I will always like I have a genuine love for it. You know what I mean? Now, when I was told the first like two other people are going to be coming in, I was going, "Oh Jesus!" But it was going, "Oh Jesus, how's this going to be? Yeah. Like how you know is it going to change the dynamic? Is it going to work? Is it not going to work?" Yeah, because you didn't but, know if it was going to work or not. Like, I know, didn't. but yeah. I knew before we went on air that it would work because I met you both as people, and if you get on with each other as people yeah it'll work in the radio yeah and also we're in a small studio for four hours and if you go in there for four hours with somebody that you don't like or mm. don't get on with that's, that's a, a, that's a long four hours it would be difficult if hour. we didn't get on whereas I actually like, I bounce out of the not every day do I bounce out of the bed uh, to get into the radio but I do <laughs> bounce out of the bed to come in <laughs> yeah like you know and, what I mean I'm leaving yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm always buzzing when I'm leaving like when I'm coming out, not to leave, but like after the show, like I have so much energy. I'm like, like, buzzing that. to leave at no. 10 o'clock. <laughs> like Christ, 10 o'clock. Those fucking no, Irish bastards. <laughs> those fucking Irish, they're not Presbyterian, those fucking Irish bastards. Your man with his fucking free state accent. <laughs> The shitty jokes. <laughs> this is what Andrew thinks I think about him my spare <laughs> time. It's definitely no, but, <laughs> no. But honestly, like I'm, I always come out of there and I'm like, oh, I'm so buzzing because I'm just such a good mood and it's just like having a laugh. Like it actually is, and I can't believe that I'm not coming out like drained. Like I'm the opposite. It's an upbeat show. Yeah. Like I know some of the stuff that you, you know, we say like we, we have this thing on the show where we go, we, we, explain the out, explain what the out is. The out is a moment where it's like, right, you leave the listener going, whoa, or like, oh my God, what did they say? Or, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like the end, when when we go into a song, and the way I like to do it is with an impact, where if you said something like, holy shit, did he just say that? It needs to be like, boom, you yeah. know, like nearly a punch in the face. Yeah. Like, a, oh my God, yeah. what was that? You yeah, so, so when we find it, so we could be talking, say, about, I don't know, maybe checking into a hotel and then, people this happened give me your experiences what happened at the hotel reception you know any stuff that can relate to people really so that we get our listeners to kind of feel that they're, they're it's about their life as well yeah you know um, and I'm learning all about that like I'd be like you know you don't go on there and be like oh you know I was uh, doing this the other day down in Cork and if people in the north don't don't get that yeah, yeah. you have yeah. to be you're like, well I don't understand this so I'm Relatable, just going to flick yeah. over you know Yeah. whereas the out I find is I, I got obsessed with the out for the first couple of you weeks did. didn't I that was funny we would be ranting I'd be like and we come up with a system where you put up your right hand if you think you have the out whereas you say a line that closes the conversation that's like the punch line that's the funny line <laughs> And I used to be sitting there, you two would be talking, I'd be like, I'm ready to go. Yeah. And you're like, there's the air. Nicky's yeah. like, and we're out. And yeah. you know it worked perfectly. It did, yeah. yeah. It, it does worked still perfectly. Does work really well, yeah. But, but I became so obsessed with the out that it's I actually forgot about it. funny because the mic didn't even go up. Now he was going, 
<laughs> yeah, but we used to have this thing so you know you know to come over to you don't yeah. have to come over to me straight away but you know Andrew Andrew's got something Andrew's got something and you came up with a great out there once once but we were talking with seagulls talking and you were like look what the world's come to and but seagulls were shagging and then he used the phrase I can't believe the world's come to this boom out yeah he's like innuendo yeah oh you yeah know what I mean? remember, yeah. Do you remember, do you remember way back when you did that I mean, that was a good That's one right, like, yeah. so <laughs> it's a it's a crazy it's a crazy uh it's a crazy way of doing it but what did your wife say to you about it? Because obviously you would have been talking to her about it. Like, this guy's coming in or this girl's coming in. I don't know who they are. And it's kind of like, this is a big thing for me. Like Kelly, my wife, she's always been supportive of me. Yeah. Like, always, no matter what the circumstance, she's always given me good advice. You know, like, and I'm not just being a cheesy, like, you know. No, but you would say that. You'll understand right? this. Marriage. You yeah. know. Oh, yeah. Sean, the, Sean knows. They yeah. support you and they're your rock. And like, you, you go to them for advice and different things like that. And, uh, Actually, I have Kelly to thank for getting in the radio, and I've told you this yeah, yeah. way, way back on our whenever we were talking about you know a well-being thing on the yeah. show. Um, for me to get in the radio, I had to leave a paid job, like, and I was bringing income into the house, and Kelly had to support both of us financially, like. Yeah. And and I remember saying at the time, that's a big thing for a man, you know, for to let the woman be the breadwinner, let the woman bring the income in, and you know, yeah, it's that's very so nice old-fashioned of me to say that, to but do that, though. we us as men like to be the you know providers, stuff like that, so. And she told me, leave your job, I'll support us to let you go and volunteer to yeah. be a radio I think that's changing though, don't you think? Oh, totally, like, yeah, I mean? totally. And it was very small-minded of me to say that, but, you know, I, just personal. No, no, it's not small-minded. That's, that's not your, that's from your experience. a personal level. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's how you felt. Not, I felt like that size, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm not bringing any money in, oh my God. Oh, but I? listen, any man would think the exact same as you. Mm. But what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is like the fact that like, you know, the fact that your wife or girlfriend at the time looked at you and saw that in you that you're like I know I, I, I know that he'll do well yeah. so I'm going to give up it's not not amazing that a woman would do that and you're yeah. right and a man can do that for a woman as well or a man you know whatever it is but but it's an amazing that your your missus you must have got great confidence from your partner oh. then from that. it's going to be like she knew how much you want it like she had yeah. more belief in me than me which was mad like yeah. and you know people say the strongest belief is the belief in yourself like she had more belief that I could do it than me and I was going oh no and it was constant rejection and you could probably relate to this Andrew through comedy like when you're trying to get into the comedy scene yeah. it was like no no you'll never make radio no you don't have a voice no you're not good enough no 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 yeah, and your yeah. rejection rejection for oh, ages yeah. and then it just takes that one oh listen I've been rejected from 95% of things I've tried for in my life yeah but you just wake up and you go I'm still doing what I want to do yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. so they haven't taken away my comedy yeah so That's I just it. keep going do you know what I mean yeah, so exactly. like Oh, you're in the mix to get this job. Okay, cool. Did I get it? No, you didn't. The, 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 the clients or the bookers didn't uh, fancy you. And I go, all right, well, I'm still, I'm still a comedian. Yeah, just carry on. And just I don't really get marry what, you too fast about what it. you want to like, get, yeah. Obviously, don't get me wrong. There's a few things that you go, I really like that. I know, but yeah. that's life, isn't it? Like, you can't get everything. And then, I, yeah, and then those things pass you by. And then, all of a sudden, then I go, oh, do you want to come on the radio? I wouldn't, have ex- I wouldn't have expected that. Yeah. You know, so like, but no, like, it's, it's, it's an interesting thing for me to do. I think it's come to me at the right time in my life. Um, in terms of being travelling and touring for a long time and gigging and stuff and I'm ready for a big break yeah. people say well you had a fucking break in the pandemic well yes we did but like if you're on six to eight flights a month and you're in exhausting. you're in six or seven different hotels a month and you know you're trying to run a house and I was doing that like all month of May when we were doing the radio I was in England I used to finish at 10 o'clock on the radio right, I was yeah. in the airport at 12 o'clock I know it's stressing me I would be back Sunday afternoon it was. was in Holland was in London London Manchester see I couldn't do that do now, you know what I mean and like you're up from five to five and then you're bang in the airport then I have to go on stage that night and do an hour yeah and it's like night time fair play so I, I couldn't do that now so, so I, I have a feeling like and I had a kind of like in my head which was why I really wanted to join the station so I started to research the station a bit you know I started to google it mm-hmm. I wanted to listen to their adverts what were they pushing what were they promoting would, it f- would, I, would I be comfortable like if it was just like and that was Taylor Swift and then the first advert is are you an alcoholic do you want more alcohol yeah. call this number well, we will deliver it nice for free actually ca- but I just cared. wanted to check yeah. what yeah. you are and I know you Q pushes a lot of national stuff and local businesses and stuff and I thought you know what that's nice because I, I, I you know and I thought oh it seems like a nice fit yeah because mm. not everything's going to fit you true yeah true yeah, right. no it is true yeah yeah you know yeah. so what's your ambition Decky and Amy do you think w- what you can do with this show do you think what would you like? So, like, Decky, when you started in 2021, what were you told? What was what was your ambition? Were you just like, look, I just want to build a solid base here and move on from that? Or was it like, right, my ambition is, is that I want to have a really funny show? Like, like Sean, did you listen to Q much? Do you listen to Q much, or how does it work for you? Yeah. Um, I sort of 
go about different uh, what we were saying beforehand like yeah the, when i get into the car bbc radio one's on but then my other um like presets is q radio uh bbc five live for the football <laughs> and uh i'm radio falta because i was like my old job sean's a gail gore as well oh, class. fluent yeah. our square guy yeah um so that's like the the four that i go between like most regularly so yeah I and really have you listened to the breakfast show yeah yeah Maybe thoughts breakfast. feelings reactions well we are it's refreshing sentence, yeah. that's like the <laughs> word i would get it's 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 different it's like it's definitely refreshing um now i i used to really like uh stephen and kate as well on there and so like um i do think q is always like got something a wee bit different it's funny because Stephen oh. Clemens is the reason I'm in radio. Like yeah. he was one of my big influences. Like because somebody mentioned time. him to me before I didn't know who he was, <coughs> and I, I ended up googling him. And obviously he was a very popular broadcaster here in the north. And he moved to BBC Radio Ulster, Ulster, yeah. Ulster and then unfortunately passed away. And did you get to know him? Yeah, but I always say to people I was a fan before I was a friend of Stephen's, like proper proper fan of Stephen's work, like and what his broadcasting and. Um, yeah, I got to know him through work in, in Q. At first, I thought he hated me. It was so funny because <laughs> we were doing a show together and I was like, oh, God, he hates me. But he was just naturally shy. Like, you know what I mean? People mm. people think, you know, because you're on radio, you need to be this confident individual that talks to everybody, like, flat out, and you're constantly funny. Or you're constantly, you know, which isn't true. Like, you know, people people could have different personality. And that's just, he was just a quiet person, but lovely, lovely guy. See, when I got to know him and talked to him and such a nice guy and such a really knowledgeable guy, too. Yeah, and Amy, did about you know about Stephen Clements? Did you ever listen to I'm, him as a kid? Or? I would have listened to him, but I, I didn't. I never met him. Obviously, I wasn't in Q or anything. But no, I would have. I would have listened to him and known him. Yeah, he know was about him, sorry. a genius. Like when it came to what was it? What was it about him? He just had a real click and a real understanding of the Northern Irish humour. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, you probably remember through the window and yeah. stuff that he used to do on the show and all that. Like it was really good. Really, really good. And he moved to BBC Radio Ulster, which is a big move. Oh, massive! Yeah, he got yeah. the coveted sort of. You know, uh, Jerry Anderson would have done the show and Sean Coyle and all. He moved to that ten thirty slot on BBC Radio Ulster, which was his ambition. That was his dream, like to get that gig and to do is that. Is that where Stephen Nolan is now? Uh, Stephen Nolan's on before that show. Okay. Yeah. So, so the ten thirty BBC Radio Ulster is the show. Show is the time is the show. Well, yeah, you could say that. Like of BBC Radio Ulster, yeah. I like, well, I, I, th- think I don't that's, know. That's I more like an that. old school thing in my head. Yeah. Like so, Stephen probably grew up listening to that show because. Jerry Anderson obviously is like probably one of the most famous like radio broadcasters here yeah. so like that's why that was such a famous show but I do think now the the two breakfast shows on Q and Cool are probably the biggest shows in the country I think yeah well I, I, I'm enjoying the crack of the show yeah so well. am I yeah. and I think it's nice because I feel like none of us are trying to like do it for our individual selves with the show like I feel like we all want to like grow the show I think we're all in it for the right reason, yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah, like, right, I, yeah. like yeah. I still have comedy. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So it's not like, like it's kind of like, you know, you've got your music and stuff like that. Like, and Amy, you're starting out, you're growing your Instagram, your sips and tips, and all you're kind of, you're, I know you're trying to get into the corporate bookings and the, yeah. the the hosting and the presenting, and you never know what radio TV might come for you and Decky and stuff like that. But I think for me, it's a bit like, why would I not want this to be good? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Why would I not want to be good? So there's no, so it's like yeah. it has to be good. So in my head, it's like I'm gonna go in upbeat. I'm gonna try and be as funny as I possibly can. Now I'm not funny all the time. Don't get me wrong. I know people come onto this podcast and they listen to us here in this podcast. This podcast isn't funny all the time. No, we just do a standard. We might just have a very serious chat one week. The next week we're just taking the ripping the piss out of each other. Aaron's taking the piss out of me. Sean's taking the piss out of me. I'm taking the piss out of Sean or Aaron or whatever. Just back and forth all the time having the crack. Yeah. Then next the next month, then we're all like, how do you feel about life? And then people are like, oh my God, that was a fucking serious one. Get back to the fucking <laughs> comedy. Then we do the comedy. They're like, why? It's so much fucking shit comedy. Go back to the fucking serious stuff. You can't win. Yeah, right? that's yeah. Whereas with Q Radio, I've gone in there and I'm so motivated to actually be like, you know what? I actually feel you can make a massive impact. Yeah. It's all about connection. That's the yeah. thing. Like, and you know what? I heard a phrase years ago and someone said it to me and it's so true and you can relate it to radio too. People like people like themselves. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, you look, you take all the biggest comedians in the world, McIntyre and Peter Kay and all that. They're all relatable. They're all relatable. You know yeah. what I mean? But, I, yeah. but then again, it's kind of like, it's exciting though, isn't it? I wonder where we're going to be in six months. I know. Where you, all, right, let's, let's pr- all right, let's ask Sean this one because right, Sean oh. knows me well, right? Sean, <laughs> where do you think 
<laughs> the three of us will be in six months. <laughs> in six months? If you say it, I'm in a fucking heroin jail house. <laughs> right. Yeah. Just sitting in there going, fuck you, man. <laughs> fuck him. I was the best one. <laughs> <laughs> right, Sean, you tell us. <clears throat> We'll be on Andrew's over gonna be <laughs> Andrew's gonna be outside a shop in Newry trying to sell animas to people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and vapes. Yeah. Got <laughs> a vape man. What about you, vapes Amy? And animas. Jesus. What where are we gonna what be? What we're gonna be at Christmas? Because like, we're doing Christmas. We are. You're doing, off. Yeah, oh we're, yeah. We're doing, we're doing Christmas. Me and Amy. Day. I'm doing Christmas oh Day on Curator. Christ. Good morning, Christmas Day. Well, I hope you're disappointed with the see shit you, you got under the tree. Day. Can you not? Can it's not pre-record that one? No, we'll be in. We'll no, be we'll in the actual studio. It's, it's, it's a magic of being in because I've been I'm in the last excited. four years. So I'm what's excited it like? about it. Oh, it's brilliant. It's class. I'm excited. Me and you are going to be yeah. doing Christmas Day. I'll bring in a wee mince pie or something. It's really shit. I'm just teeing them up for it to be. <laughs> no, 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 it's it's really it's really it's really last, no. I'm only joking. I can't it's wait to Christmas Day morning. Good morning. It's Q Radio on Christmas Day. I hope he is called to the house, to the little children. I hope there's happiness and love. In the house, knowing that by lunchtime the hatred will be back. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Andrew, you can all open the mic. You can all open the mic. Ho ho! Holy fuck of the war! I know you'll enjoy Christmas Day. Yeah, it's different good. vibes. It's, it's brilliant. Yeah. So what? What do you think? What do you think? Like, because I'm really enjoying it, and I think it suits me. It suits yeah. my lifestyle now because I'm taking a lot of time off the circuit and the comedy off the circuit because I finished the tour and filmed the special, which will be out soon and. Um, I just want a bit of a break from the road and to learn something new and something cool and to get good at something and you never know where it will lead to but I also I'm very ambitious to be in there saying guys we've got a I kind of go in and I go you know what we've got a good dynamic we've got something I think we've got something good going on we just got to make sure that we, we make the most of it really yeah like I'm excited about it because it's so new to me as well like I always did like full time like marketing jobs and office jobs and this is a big change for me so I'm more excited I'd say six months we'll all be more settled in and then hopefully like I'll be able to be more comfortable and that yeah. sort of like media sort of thing because you both even with you with the music as well as um doing radio like you're both have done quite a lot of performances is very new to me so just want to get more at that better but you're not going to be you're not gonna, like I like, I mean it must be how many years did it take or how long did it take you to say you felt very com- not comfortable but you're never fully comfortable yeah but like you just want to learn more you yeah. know well like the first show because I remember the first show I got was Saturday Breakfast and that was once a week. So I couldn't like run a household on one show a week. You know what I mean? But it took me a year to jump from Saturday breakfast to the afternoons. So that you're doing one show a week for a year? Yep, one show a week for a year. What, no, was, what was your was job otherwise? What before that, that was six months of voluntary work with Queen's University Radio. So I had like three listeners. It was like my ma, dad, my wife. Yeah, like. but the whole point of that is <laughs> that vol- the voluntary work kind of shows you that you want this. Well, I did yeah. that too. Yeah, I did that too with... Um, yeah, community radio and got into it. Everyone seems yeah. to be doing community radio. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't say it. So I feel like I. I'm on air. I did. I did. <laughs> Sean did community <laughs> radio as well. Yeah. yeah. He did the IR. It's a lo- the, the, the loneliest place in the world. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Really like, like so sitting I over two hours. Is there home. anybody there? No. no. Oh, well, I did it with another guy. I did it with a guy called Will, and he was actually sort of got me used to. Do, like doing a show with somebody else then when I come on with you I was used to talking to, with somebody else who was better also your ex oh my ex my ex work husband oh, I thought you, you said your ex was better your, uh, my ex work husband yes oh I can't be no I'm only that. joking I'm only messed um, but here you always said better to have two husbands than one husband. your <laughs> ex partner <laughs> radio partner is now doing stand up isn't he he is he does stand up as well so there it's you actually go. yeah your what it's your Will does stand up you know who I, oh, I met him at the with? Empire yeah lovely fella yeah did really so he's well. starting off as well and yeah he's doing the same thing he's a nice guy yeah Decky's uh, the he... next man to go up on stage now I can't wait I look I'll be buzzing for that we're going to get Decky up uh, to do a bit of comedy Sean what do you think Sean uh, Sean, Sean I, I want to get Sean to do it as well Sean has to do it as well because he Sean produces so many comedy podcasts Sean yeah Sean do it know. Sean you'd be funny man I actually want to know it? Sean where will I be in six months because you said Andrew will be selling what enemas I said him enemas in Newry of all the places Newry like he's went what do you think um, I think you're going to be trying to pick up the pieces of uh, the, the court case. The, the court cases. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's going to be a big catastrophe in the next, be like Holly next couple of months. <laughs> I can't believe he lied to me. <laughs> Open up a big story. I'm oh shocked and appalled. Posh, I even though I used I've, to see him in the dressing room all the time. Oh with the I want to know. I want to know if there's beef, you know, between the Q crew and the Cool FM crew. No. No, no, no. no. 
No. Everybody thinks it's like that Everyone scene from Anchorman and we're yeah. in the street with whip out <laughs> flick knives on me yeah. like right yeah. you got no business around here. <laughs> I, <laughs> I think I know like well I know Pete and I've I met off Pete once so he was lovely. Talk. I met Pete when we were both doing a video shoot at like Emerge Music Festival. I don't remember because it was the first time I probably met him in person. I went, mate, right, I've one bit of advice. What's it like having a baby and doing a breakfast show? Because my wife was pregnant at the time and he's two daughters. Yeah. yeah, two daughters. I remember being like, What's it like, you know? Having a family and being on the breakfast show, I was like, "Mate, you'll be sweet." Yeah. And he was lovely. He was so oh, nice. a gentleman. Yeah. So a gentleman. no, there's no beef whatsoever. <laughs> I know. I, I know Pete. I've had coffees with him, played golf with him, and he's an absolute one hundred percent gentleman. And he's a lovely fella, and uh, obviously, absolutely fantastic radio show. But you know, you know, that's, there's no issues with anything. Like it's just everyone just gets on with their own thing. You yeah, know? there's and no I, reasons for this. In thing. my head, I'm just not. I'm gonna. Imagine that that's not the case. I'm just gonna forget that you told me that. Yeah, but still gonna imagine. <laughs> he wants there to is, leave. There is absolutely no. There's no like I don't understand people say. Oh, there must be. There is no beef. Everybody like, always. Wants no one's to even that mentioned it to anybody. Yeah. Like, like, like they're, 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 they're sending the news free like. Memes <laughs> saying like when, like a picture of you and being like when you order Pete Paul and Rebecca off oh, waste stuff. Oh, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> That's my cover photo of you. Yes. <laughs> Unreal. That's amazing. I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh, joking. That's cool. cool. Listen, listen, Jackie and Amy, thanks for coming in. Oh, thank you for having me. It's so like good you. to have uh, the guys here. Obviously, we just come up in the studio to do this. Um, obviously, just have a bit of a chat about stuff that we may or may not be talking. He's anxious. That we may or... Yeah, I know. I need to get her. <laughs> um, that we may or may not talk about stuff on the radio. So, uh, But if you can, like, just tune in 6 to 10. If you can't, don't worry about it. You can listen to it all anywhere all over the world as well uh, to download the app. On the can day. I just say one thing before yeah. I go? Now, it started back in 93. <laughs> I'm only joking. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> he was sweating. He was like, the two o'clock second. Cork in the North, uh, thanks so much uh, in terms of... Uh, uh, liking, sharing and subscribing we will be posting up details on the uh, merchandise will you be able to buy cups what else will you be able to buy Amy cups and t-shirts cups and t-shirts mm-hmm. will be on sale soon for Cork and the North uh, stuff like that but yeah please do keep liking sharing and subscribing and uh, try and come to uh, a comedy show please try and listen to the radio and uh, we do appreciate every single person that downloads or recommends the podcast thank you very much guys see you soon Bye. Bye. such a good one Great crack. We've got a